Oh, uh, because I may want I may want to play this for folks that who aren't here today, or make my job easier next period, and I'll just play them the recording, right? All right. So, hey, welcome to physical science. This is Mr. A, and uh, we're going to do some science because you know that's why we showed up, right? All right. So I've got some salt, and I'm going to put the salt just I don't know a random amount right here. Or you know what? No, I could do a measured amount. I'm going to do a measured amount of salt. Okay, so I could uh, get a scale. Let's see, turn this baby on, and I want to measure out. I want to measure out. Come on, I want to measure out. I'm going to tear that. Okay, eleven. Okay, eleven point six. All right, so Carlos, write this down. All right, uh, 20, 21, gra 21 grams of salt. All right, and I'm going to put that. I'm going to put that on my little tray right here. All right, 21 grams of salt. Okay, now I've got this other stuff. I got this other stuff in this bag, this scientific bag. Here. I'm going to open that up. Mr. A, you're making me seasick. All right, and here I've got iron filing. Iron filings, right? Iron filings have this great uh, physical property that they are ferromagnetic or they are attracted to a magnet. In this little bag, I got a, I got a magnet. There's a magnet right here. I don't know if you can see that because I got, well, the magnet is in the bag so, there's a, so that I don't get iron filings on the magnet, right? But you see, if I get the magnet close, oh, look at all that, right? All that stuff comes up on the magnet, right? Okay, so obviously, this substance has a physical property that's the behavior of, uh, uh, it's not magnetic itself, but it is attracted to a, mag a magnet. That's, that's one of the physical properties of iron, okay? So I'm going to take a measured amount of that. Here's my measuring thingy. Let's turn this down. Here we go. And then, all right, Carlos, you're writing this down? All right, I'm going to weigh, I'm going to weigh some of this out. By the way, is iron a uh, is it a element? A sub is, it's a substance. Is it an element or a compound? Okay, don't everybody show shout at once, right? And wait, look at all those people shouting with their mics muted. It's the most funny thing I've ever seen, right? Okay, you have to turn your mic off if you're going to shout. Okay, all right, Carlos, uh, twenty-four point seven grams of iron. All right, all right. So we're going to add that. For those of you who said iron was an element, raise your elbow really high in the sky. You don't know what I'm talking about. All right, look at me. Raise your elbow really high in the sky and pat yourself on the back. Okay? Because iron is an element. Okay? Now, what about salt? What is salt? Is that an element or a compound or a mixture? Well, I don't know, Mr. A. It's salt. Uh, let me give you a hint. Salt. Salt, there's a chemical formula for salt. You might have seen that before, sodium chloride, right? Sodium is an element. Chlorine is an element. You put them together, two or more elements in combination is a, it's a compound, right? All right, so salt is a compound. So look, on this tray right here, we have elemental iron and the compound sodium chloride, uh, more casually known as table salt, right? All right. Now, I got one more thing. I went to the beach this morning at Lake Hartwell. You can tell it's Lake Hartwell because I got sand. All right? Now, we need a lot of sand. A lot of sand, all right? There. Oh, three spoons. Woo! There we go. Look at that, Mr. A can phone three things at the same time. All right, Carlos, 24.5 grams of sand, right? Right straight from Lake, Hart Lake Hartwell. You can tell because it looks red. Does it look red? Uh, it looks a little red. Okay. All right, now, now you smart guys out there in TV land, sand, element, compound, or mixture. All right, I'm going to let you look real close. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in, autofocus. 
What do you think? Element compound mixture. Hey, wait a minute. Tyler, are you awake? I don't see you anymore. You got up and left. Oh, there he is. Wake up, Tyler. Element compound or mixture, Tyler? What is saying? Mixture. It is a mixture. Oh, you guys are so smart. All right. So you can tell it's a mixture because you see the little flakes of stuff in there, right? Okay. I'm going to add that to my plate. Oh, man, this is like Sunday buffet after church, man. Look at this. Yummy goodness. All right. So on my little uh, dinner plate here, I have these three, uh, three, two substances and one mixture, right? And then uh, the substances, which are the iron and the salt, uh, iron is elemental and salt is a compound. All right. Now, this is the fun part. Watch. I wish you were here. You could do this, too. Ah! Hope you wrote this down, Carlos, because if you didn't, we're in big trouble. Okay. Wow, I'm making a big mess of my desk. All right. Tyler, you're good at this. What have I got now? Mixture, element, or compound? Mixture. Yes, mixture. All right. Yeah. Okay, now you smart people. $5. For the first student who can separate those three things all to their known quantity five dollar gift card starbucks right starbucks okay all right and listen i'm even getting a smile out of cam now all right either that or she's walking her when she's watching her cartoon all right so i'm going to make this easy for you get i'm going to make it easy for you to win the uh the starbucks all right Here's what I got for you. All right. Let's, oh, Mr. A, you're making me seasick. Woo! All right. Over here, I got you. All right? You get, you get a beaker. You get a hot plate. And I got a little ring stand. A little ring stand. And on the ring stand is a funnel. All right? I'm going to give you that magnet back. All right? You can use the magnet. All right? Uh, in addition, wait, wait a minute. Hey, Carlos, come here. Carlos, go fill me up a beaker of water. We need some water. All right? Right over there at the sink, Carlos. No, oh, right there. I got a sink right over there. All right. I'm going to give you uh, the magnet, a little boat. That's what we call a way boat. I'll give you the scale back even, all right? All right? I'm going to put the uh, – where's my plastic bag? All right. Okay. Give me the magnet. All right, Carlos has brought me some water. Man, that's some ugly looking water. Woo, don't drink it if it comes out of my sink, all right? Okay. Coffee filter and the mixture, all right? All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this in the, uh, this, is what the this is the stuff you got, all right? This is all, this is all the stuff you got, okay? So. I want you to, I'm going to post this in a Google Classroom. Let me do this real quick. I think I can post a question. If I go to the Classwork tab, create a question, it's going to be a sh uh, ooh, short, an short answer question. Um, write a procedure to separate the mixture. OK? I'm going to post this in the Google Classroom because I want to see uh, your responses. All right? This is not going to be great. I just want to see how smart you are. Okay? So I'm going to send that out. I'm going to ask a question. You go to your Google uh, Classroom and go to the Classwork tab. You'll see the question posted. Write a procedure to separate the mixtures. Now, a procedure is a step by step. Uh, description of the stuff that you will do to separate the salt from the sand from the iron. Okay? I'm going to give you uh, 36 weeks and 24 seconds to do that. No, 24 seconds. No, 36. No, three minutes. Three minutes, six seconds to do that. 
I'm recording this. I gotta have I gotta have stuff going on in the background. Uh, maybe we could play some Led Zeppelin. All right, Bryce, you probably got some good music. Crank it up. Man. Now wait a minute. I think Zoe does maybe because Zoe has uh, Zoe's cat has headphones on. Zoe's cat is jamming out to some Led Zeppelin. Mr. What are you talking about? Led Zeppelin. Come on, Google it. Band from the seventies. You'll never be the same. You can't unhear that stuff. Okay, who thinks they got a good idea of what I should do first? Just tell me. Open your mic up and tell me what I should do. What's the first thing? You got you got to turn your mic on, Carlos. Um, you can use a magnet to separate the iron. Okay. So yeah, be quick on that mic because you don't want to hear me echo. I got to uh, find my little. I had a Ziploc bag that that magnet came in. Now I can't find it. Did it fall on the floor? Okay, real quick. Maybe I got an envelope or something here. Now, the reason I do this is because, uh, all right, I'm going to put, i got to see my screen. All right. So Carlos says to separate the iron first, okay? So what I can do is I, I put the, I put the um, oh, wow, that works pretty good. I put the magnet in an envelope so that I don't have to clean the magnet, right? So Carlos says, okay, all right, so I, what, what am I doing? How am I able to separate this mixture? Well, you guys, we said it before, is that the, the, the iron has a physical property that enables you to separate it from the mixture, and that iron's physical property is that it's attracted to a magnet, right? Okay, so all I got to do is bring a magnet near and all the iron gets separated, right? So all I got to do is remove my magnet. Ta-da! Now I might have a little bit of stuff in there, but I think that's pretty doggone good, right? Close. Okay, now... My mixture only has salt and sand in it, all right? Who else out there in TV lane can tell me how do I get the salt out of the sand using only the equipment that I have here on this table? Hmm? Again, I've got a hot plate. I've got a filter. Okay, I got a filter, a hot plate, I got some Wawa, and another empty beaker. Hernandez, come on, how about you? What do you, what do you, want, what do you want me to do next? Um, what I think you would do is pour the, put the empty beaker on the hot plate. Yep. And then, um... Uh, pour the mixture in the funnel, or like no, put the coffee filter on on the on in the funnel. Okay. And then in the coffee funnel, pour the mixture of sand and salt. Yes. Okay. And then and do what? Pour the water in. Oh. Okay. And I think after that, um. I think the um, salt would combine with the water, and then eventually, once it reaches the empty beaker, what would re remain after the water evaporates would be, like, the salt. Okay, now be careful, because I haven't got anything hot yet. There's nothing's going to yeah. evaporate. We're all working at room temperature. But mm -hmm. I think you're on the right track. Okay. You are counting on the physical, a physical property, or maybe it's a chemical property, of salt. What does salt do when you put it in water? It 
it uh, starts with a D, ends with an ALF. It dissolves, it right? Dissolves. Yeah. So the salt dissolves and then allows that to, uh, the particles are going to be so small that it passes through uh, the filter and the filter is going to capture and leave all the salt behind, right? Very good. And then uh, I just have to dry out the sand and then I can weigh it and see how much I got. And then what I can do is I can heat up the beaker of salt water and evaporate. That's when you evaporate, evaporate all of the water, leaving the salt behind, okay? Very, very smart, guys. You guys are, are on it. Now, here's, here's the reason that I took so much class time. Here's the reason that I took so much class time today to go through this. Because I started this out by saying, listen, I want to help you with your project. All right? What you just did, what you guys thunk up on your own, and what you wrote down in the Google Classwork questions, was that you had a procedure which took advantage of the physical and chemical properties of the substances in order to separate those substances from the mixture. You took advantage of the fact that the iron was magnetic and that the salt was dissolvable, and in the end, you were able to separate them all. Now, what I just did in front of you, did I not just filter that mixture to separate the stuff that I wanted. Is that not what I'm asking you to do by making a water filter? So in your task is going to be to think of some things that might help you uh, separate the dryer lint from the liquid. Now, I think that might be a pretty easy thing to do, but you gotta just think about it in terms like a chemist, all right? Well, what are the physical properties of the lint compared to the physical properties of the liquid that I want and then how do I separate the lint from the liquid, right? Do you think I can separate the lint and the liquid by shining a light on it? No, but there is something you can do, right? It's called a filter, right? So put your little noggin on and uh, think about what you can do to filter out either eggnog or Mountain Dew or Kool-Aid or it seems like there was something else that I suggested that you could use. So you don't have to actually use dryer lint. If you don't use dryer lint, I'll tell you what, you can still drink everything I ask you to use that I suggested that you use for your experiment. You could actually drink after you filter it out. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, so <clears throat> I hope that was helpful because uh, you know the, the most important part of the project is going to be you explaining to me why you used what you used in your filter. And I want you to explain it to me using the vocabulary and the concepts that we learned in chapter 15 in the classification of matter, you know, including such things like, you know, what are the chemical and physical properties of the stuff that you use in order to separate the mixture, all right? I know it's a challenge, but if you just sit down and turn off all your distractions, I think you'll come up with a good answer. All right, so I'm gonna stop recording now and uh, see how I do that.